Okay, so what about maybe one of the mothers of your kids? You I love see, them. You, you don't see like a <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> future with like you yeah know, they the mothers of my children I mean, you know, just one of them you don't but see then that's a disservice to the other ones <sighs> i'm just I, i'm over here <laughs> and if you want to see me i'll be at the house <laughs> are you lonely how could i be i got 12 kids yes, but like lonely. there's like a different type of love what do you think i'm missing from early beginnings in the entertainment industry to becoming a multi-talented businessman, producer, and beacon of light for many rising talents, Nick Cannon has been making his mark in Hollywood for years. Now, he's stepping into the shade room and sharing just what that journey has been like thus far. What's up, roommates? It's your girl, Tembi, and today we have none other than Nicholas Scott Cannon. <laughs> she put the whole government out there. <laughs> To the shade room. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm good. Good to see you, Timmy. Good to see you too. Always smiling, always just so <laughs> buoyant. I love it. I love it. You, there's a light around you. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm so excited to talk to you today. Yes. Um, and you know, we're gonna touch on a little bit of everything, but uh -oh. the main thing I want to remind people of today is who Nick Cannon is. Okay. I appreciate that. Because you are literally child star turned mogul. And I'll take it. <laughs> I know, people don't talk about it enough, you know, yeah, with the yeah. conversations when they talk about moguls within our space, they talk about the 50s and the ditties and the J's, but you should be, you know, up in that conversation as far as a mogul goes. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take it, you know what I mean? I, uh, they said, if you live for the praise, you die by the criticism. Uh, so I just really, God has blessed me with an opportunity yeah. to create platforms and opportunities for others. So that's the space in, and yeah. if we want to call that a mogul, I'll take it. Well, I'm trying to get rid of my ego, so <laughs> so titles and all of that stuff right. don't mean much to me. But that is even reason why I created the super, the future superstar brand and mm -hmm. continuing, you know, the next generations of wilding out is really just to give others an opportunity. Right. And right. and you know, and I come from a strong family, a big family that is rooted in you know some some quality moral compass energy. So I was taught well by right. my grandmother and my mom mm -hmm. and you know even my dad had influence over me so um that's that, that's where it comes from just being raised right mm -hmm. okay and you were um the youngest writer in television at like 17. yeah and yeah uh, nick not nick cannon will yeah. smith will smith kind of signed you and put you on so can you give us like a backstory yeah that was a great started? opportunity yeah yeah I, I, again being a kid you know 16 years old i was writing producing music writing scripts all i was just trying to get on i was dancing on soul train or whatever wherever i could get to it in my teenage years and i was doing stand-up and uh will smith's team uh when they first started overbrook saw me at uh jamie fox's who also even before i got with will smith uh uh jamie had a, a situation a festival in Atlanta called Laugh of Palooza, and that's where Will's people yeah. saw me do stand up. I rocked it that night, and they're like, Yo, we're gonna introduce you to Will back at the office in LA. Will came in, he's like, Yo, you remind me of me. Like, I had it, and I had my script right there, and I was like, Yo, we should do this show. Uh -huh. And he signed me on the spot, you know, to the TV, music, play, and, you know, he's been an inspiration uh, and a big brother since that day mm -hmm. and you've put a lot of people on in the space so is that where that kind of absolutely comes from? i saw he, he how he put people on how jamie fox put people on like how martin put people on mm -hmm. uh eddie murphy like when you look at they they don't get enough credit a lot of times but even if you go back and you just watch their films and watch their shows yeah. and look at all of the people who now are stars but started off with a smaller role here or there and it's like it's it's really about community and, and looking out for each other and, and I learned from them. Yeah. And we know Kelani is like one of the people that you really kind of helped get like her career off and I think her as well. But like who are some other people that people may not be aware that you played a you hand know, in there? That's the thing. Like when I get asked that question, I, I get a little weirded out because all of those people that even from her and Kelani, like those, those people were gifted when I met them. Right. You know, and and we're on their path. I might have just took my light and you know, or whatever opportunities, yeah. and kind of fed them in the sense to where they can get to where they could go. But I can't take credit for. 
I don't like to say I'll put nobody on, even with the future superstars. Like, I'm not saying I'm just creating a platform to where these people who are really, if you got that superstar energy, this is going to elevate you. And that's what happens. So, so I'll give you some names, but, but yeah, it's, I just don't <laughs> want, like, I hate taking credit for somebody else's right. gift that God has given them. Um, so, I mean, you think about everybody on Wild and Out. I, I can say I, I made Kevin Hart. <laughs> that's the only person I will take credit for. No, right. I'm just joking. This, you know how we feel about each other. Yeah. But, um, but even like something like Wild and Out, that was an opportunity that, you know, I'll my money out of my own pocket. I created a platform back in the day and look at everybody that you didn't know before they were on that show and now that they've been on that show for almost 20 years. So the list goes on for from the days of that we, we started with, you know, Cat Williams and yeah. D-Ray and Apion and me and Kev and like that was just me hanging out with my friends. Right, right. And now all of them dudes uh, got more money than me. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I would just say, like, even like the, the names, a lot of young people um, that I had an opportunity to work with, you know, when I was chairman at uh, Teen Nick. Yeah, so it's uh, watching a lot of these people that I casted or met now, and now they starring in movies yeah. and, you know, taking it to the next level. A lot of people know the, the story, too, of uh, somebody I love dearly, like Pete Davidson. Uh, is a kid that used to call my radio show yeah. uh, at 15 years old and try to tell jokes. I'm like, man, finish high school and I'll take you on the road with me. And that's exactly that's what awesome. I did. And, yeah. You know, we put him, took him on the road, uh, His life is put him in a movie, put him on Wild and Out and SNL. Right now, he was one of the biggest uh, stars in, in the right. game now. So I mean, just that process in itself, man. It's I can't take the credit, but again, I could be a conduit. Okay, and then when it comes to your talent, I have to like read it off the list because you're an actor, a <laughs> comedian, a TV host, a radio host, a DJ. What am I missing? A poet, a musician, a producer, a songwriter, a graduate of Howard University. Hey, H U. <laughs> and basically, low key a talent recruiter. So, hey. what haven't you done that you want to do? Uh. I mean, like I said, I think I've done everything I could ever imagine in this space. And the fact that now I'm at a point in my career where I just want to give other people opportunities. And mm -hmm. I and I look up to individuals like Quincy Jones, who really affected culture by what he cultivated. What's your favorite job or like what are you most passionate about? You know what it is? Daddy. <laughs> That's come on. I, I love that. that. Because you, uh, you've got your hand in so many But it things. all seems like one job to me, to be honest. Like, entertainment, mm -hmm. you know, creating. Like, I, I, my job is to wake up each and every day uh, and be creative. And that's a yeah. blessing. So uh, I don't really see, like, oh, today I'm going to do music. Or, oh, today I'm going to do comedy. Or I'm going to write a script. Or I'm going to direct a movie. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's all, it all comes from the same place, from the, the same uh, frequency of just having vision and, and foresight and then actually accom accomplishing it. Yeah. So you just commented on one of our posts uh, the other day was of um, North and Monroe. Oh, yeah, dance. that was epic. That was cute, that right? Was, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned in there that, you know, you actually co-wrote and produced the song. Yeah, yeah. I never, first of all, I never want to take credit away right. from Mariah. Right. So that's why I, I, I shouldn't even say I co-wrote. I was just... You were just there. I was, no, well, see, I'll tell you how that story... And it's funny, too, because I saw, I saw some other people in the comments like acting like I was lying. I ain't got <laughs> to lie about. <laughs> what am I going to lie for? But, but interestingly enough, during that time when we, when we were married, um, I would do a lot of work, music stuff, but yeah. I never wanted people to... To, yeah, just because it wasn't about that. It, we would just do stuff and make music yeah. be, it, it's because of the love and, right. the, and the passion. So I didn't want people to think like, oh, he's now he's, you know, he's producing her <laughs> records. And, you know, like, so, so I, uh, I created an alias. And I did, the funny, and I'll tell you even how the alias came about, because Jay-Z was actually the person who inspired me mm. to not be Nick Cannon, the producer, because right. again, all I ever wanted to do was make music and, mm. and be a producer. But I'll tell you that story later. <laughs> but uh, the but I knew it was wise to kind of come up with an alias as a producer for multiple reasons. Right. So I created a this the alias called the Heat Miser. Heat Miser. And if you look on the the uh, the 
it's, it's a lot of different aliases, but that was my main one and uh, for that song specifically. And on the credits, it says produced by Heat Miser. So I'm Nick you. Cannon, a.k.a. Heat, Heat Miser. Miser. You once said um, that you could beat Drake, Lil Wayne, and Andre 3000 in a rap battle. Do you still feel that way? I will always feel that <laughs> way. Every, every MC should feel that way. And I have a platform and a stage for them to come prove it if they want to smoke. <laughs> All you got to do is pull up the wild and out and we can get these bars going for the, for the fans. Right. Now, but of course, I mean, again, to your point, like those three people are my favorites, you know, yeah. that, I, that I love. But uh, in the in the sport of hip hop, as everybody says, you're supposed to believe you're the best. Right. And that's why I created wild and out. It's funny because parts of the origin was like where people, you know, freestyling is just something that we always do. And if yeah. you really do it, that's a cultural thing. So, but a lot of these artist artists are a little scared. Yeah. Because, and at rightly so, you gotta protect your image. You don't wanna be out there looking crazy. Mm -hmm. But if we talking about the true elements of hip hop, it's really- Cause you you're off the head with You it. gotta just come yeah. off the top and do what you do. And that was the fun stuff about hip hop. Yeah. But now it's been so, you know, uh, commercialized and you gotta be very careful what you do and what you say. And it's, it's certain things that I just want to get back to the root of having fun with it. And that's why, you know, I say stuff like that every now and then, especially when we promote and while and out right. just to, to, you know, get the <laughs> headlines rocking. But um, but yeah, it's, it's really about having a good time. Yeah. And anybody who ever comes on that show sees that. And, and and that to me is what our culture is all about. Wild and Out is iconic. Like, Thank you. it's iconic. And it it's, is. I think, one of, if not the most, um, the longest running show on Viacom or MTV. Is that, yeah, is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, based off of, it's we're going into our think about this. We're going into our twentieth season. Wow! Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. And and realistically, the amount of television that I've produced and created uh, is almost unprecedented in the sense of we'll have five hundred episodes a while and out. Wow! So, and like people was you wow. know championing Seinfeld when he had a hundred. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we got five hundred. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's 500 episodes that have built careers. Mm. You know what I mean? And for our culture, not just comedy, but music and, you know, strong black women stepping, stepping up and showing everyone, you know, that uh, what, what they can do. I know, and then when you think about the shows that were developed with that network, like a TRL or like a yeah. Cribs, and it's like, wow, and now there's the one that like yeah. skyrocketed so that's amazing so what what is it that you look for when you are looking for the superstar the it person well the, again going back to credit, like i don't feel like i have the authority to be like you're a superstar yeah i feel like it's something that we possess okay it's an energy it's if you got super you got superstar energy i told you this before it's <laughs> like you know someone like yourself is going to be successful just because of how you walk in the room how you embody how you eye contact the things that actually matter in each and every field, not just entertainment. Like mm -hmm. it, it's it's the aura. It's uh, having that ability to whatever you have inside you. You know you're gonna get it out. You're gonna reach your goal, and it's the the fortitude of that, and and being able to have to connect with people, to allow spirits to fill your spirit. From his previous marriage to superstar Mariah Carey to his many high profile relationships, Nick is no stranger to having his love life out there for the world to see. And as a man with 12 children and very fluid views on love and relationships, Nick is sharing his ever evolving experiences with romance. So, you know, I want to kind of talk about, change gears a little bit and talk about dating. Um, because when you do think about I'm like, clearly not good that, <laughs> you're Timmy. not dating. <laughs> I, I thought you said like, like <laughs> thought you wanted some advice. So I'm like, I am the wrong person to ask <laughs> that type of stuff. Well, I mean, you've been in a lot of like high-profile relationships, right? And right. you've been a very successful businessman. Do you feel as though you've been successful in love? Uh, it depends on how you define success. You know, I mean, I operate at a 528 hertz at all time. Like, it's just the the frequency of love is in me. Like, I'm 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 a lover. You know what I mean? I got, uh, you know, not it don't even say hopeless romantic. It says fearless romantic tatted on my back. Like, I love love. You when, fall in love like hard. Like in a, in a day, <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> like you are you about to change everything for me. 
Like, what makes you, like, fall so hard? I just, like, what do you think? I, I, I read romance novels and listen to old school 80s R&B. Like, I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. I think I fall. And, you know, through therapy and stuff, I realized that I, I'm in love with love. And, mm. you know, one should be in love with the individual and not mm. the process and the fun and the, uh, that. So, you know, I've learned over the time. But I, I had clearly, like... I'm a romantic. So would you say that's why like monogamy is difficult for you? Yeah, I think, I mean, I have, I have various uh, takes on it. I always feel like, I, clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> so but I, I, I read too many books. <laughs> but, <laughs> You're trying but, to figure it out. <laughs> but, but I think just some of the, the, the origins of it feel like ownership. And anything that kind of feels that way for me really? feels a little, I, I don't want to have, I want you to be free. I want you to be able to move how you want to move. I don't want to, to put any class or restraints on you or, to, you know, I say to, to define you is to confine you. So in that sense, if you love me, mm -hmm. you know. You don't want someone to grow old with? I'm, I got a whole bunch of people <laughs> to grow old with. <laughs> Fair, fair point. <laughs> so, I'm Are trying to figure out how, where y'all going. <laughs> but, uh, but no, but that's the thing. Like, I, I think I always ask people this question too, Timmy. You think about it. Like, what if somebody told you 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 were only allowed to have one friend for the rest of your life? It's like, not the same. But because are we? So are we talking about intimacy? Because at some point, all this stuff stopped working. <laughs> like, you're going to need somebody that you can rock with as a friend forever. Right, right. And that's the thing. But, like, we all have multiple. I still got friends from kindergarten. Mm -hmm. uh, but imagine, like, but that's the thing. Once we put intimacy and, and sexuality on top of it, then all of a sudden we got all of these rules and boundaries and stuff. Like, who says? Like, I, I want to be able to pick up the phone with somebody I talk to. Girl, what you doing? Like, and, yeah. and, and, or what, it's, I, again, I'm an anti-authoritarian in that sense to where I don't feel like anybody can tell me how I should live my life. Okay. So I just operate and hopefully it's practicing compassion and love and, you know, Okay, so how many frequency. girlfriends do you have? Friends that are girls? <laughs> no, girlfriends. Nah, I don't have any girlfriends. I feel no. like, like, um, that's the thing. Like, first of all, Damn, I'm a I'm a middle aged man, Timmy. <laughs> like you still got here with girlfriends. Well, you said you don't want a wife. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, well, my focus now is my children, okay. and then my my business. So, I I literally don't have time to. I I've even every like I might entertain like oh we'll go on a date or something like, and I might see you again in four months. <laughs> like like I don't have that energy. I don't yeah. have that bandwidth to. Like, and then I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to my family if I'm out here looking for love. Okay, so what about maybe one of the mothers of your kids? You I love see, them. You, you don't see, like, a <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> you don't see a future with, like, you Yeah, they're the mothers of my children. I mean, even with just one of them, you don't but see. But then that's a disservice to the other ones. <sighs> I'm, just, I, I'm over here. <laughs> and if you want to see me, I'll be at the house. <laughs> are you lonely? How could I be? I got 12 kids. Yes, but lonely. like, there's like a different type of lonely. What do you think I'm missing? I think... When, even when you say like lonely. I think, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> what you're I was doing. like, I got I everything think, I want. It's like, a blessing. But like true, like just like partnership. And, I have like, that. But, okay. okay. I have that on, Our, like there's, that's what I'm saying. Like, and the one thing I never want to do, and you clear clear this up a little yeah. bit is that I never want to generalize the relationships that I have. Like, oh, these my ladies. Yeah. <laughs> like, this my hair on. I'm like, that's, that's silly. Uh, I have individual relationships with each person in my life. Okay. And, you know, I, I'm, I, res some, I respect them on the level and, and I, I respect their, their peace. You know, I, you know, I'm not a private person, but I try to give everybody who wants to operate and privacy and keep their life personal. I love that. So but then there's some people that be like, hey, let's go out and let's turn up and let yeah. the world know. I'm with that too. I've done that on every level. And I've had every type of relationship with a woman that a man could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. So now I'm so content in the space and especially as a father, I, don't, I just allow 
you got to go with the flow. Like when, when we talk about alignment and we talk about like, you know, first you got to get your spiritual bandwidth together on what, what matters. And then it's about flow after that. And I can only flow on a frequency that's going to get me to where I need to be elevated. Has someone ever turned you down because of that outlook? I don't chase people. I don't know. I ain't never been turned down before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the only reason why is because I know the energy. I know okay. the flow. So I'm, is it I'm, because you have access? Is that what it is? There's probably a little okay. bit of that. But yeah. that, and I also, but in a sense, I'm I'm somewhat. It's hard to say because I don't want to, you know. It's the, it's the balance, it's the equanimity of your ego. I don't want to say like, oh, I got it like that. But it's more about like, I'm a naturally introverted, shy person. So even when I step in the room, I'm observing. And if I feel energy coming towards me, then I'll engage. But if, if you know, I, I'm not chasing nobody. So I don't know, like the turn down thing, you got to chase somebody right. to be able to get turned down. It's usually like, I like who like me. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> Pretty good, but like, well, who would you say was the love of your life? Like the greatest. I mean, I always talk about that, and then it goes viral, and all her fans get mad at me. But it's oh, like, Mariah. bro, I say like that was. I was 12 years old with Mariah Carey pictures on my one, and that be that comes my wife, and the fact that like she's the coolest person I ever met. Like yeah. I get a lot of this, you know, delightful disposition from her. Like she's just always happy, always doing for others. Like, no matter what's happening in life, I'm like, wow, a person can really operate like that and don't allow negative energy into yeah. their space. So when that's, you that's like, when I found that out about her and saw how uh, remarkable she was, like, that woman's not human. She's, yeah. she's a gift from God. You know, you kind of touched on your kids a little bit. Um, and is there anyone... <laughs> Is there anyone who you dated in the past that you wish, like, you know Ooh, what? Yeah, I, you wish I, would, me in trouble, I wish I wish we would have had a baby. Everybody talks about having kids. Yeah. You know, like, that's the thing, especially. But there, I think, see, if I say this, I know it's going to go it's viral. Okay. But I always, I mean, even when you think about it, like, when, uh, Christina Milian and I were doing Love Don't Cost a Thing. Uh -huh. and it, like, I remember when I found out she, I don't even, like, when I found out she was pregnant, I don't think I, did I have kids? I know, but I was. Were you like, damn? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> dang, man. That could have been me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but, that, but I was so happy for her. Right. And, you know, her daughter's amazing. And I believe she even, I think she has more kids. Yeah, now. yeah. I think she has like two. Or yeah, three. so, but I remember that. We was kids in love at early on, yeah. you know. And so that, you talked about that, but, you know, teach his own life. Yeah. Life plans it out. The universe gives it how it's supposed to be given. I mean, it could still happen one day. Uh, no, she married now. <laughs> she, or, I don't know what this situation, but she she was a she that was the homie, and, yeah. and we definitely had our our romantic thing conversations about what it would be like back then. I love that. That's so cute. And I think it's really been like this is the twentieth year of love. Don't cost love. Don't cost a thing. thing. Cause I think what drumline was twenty last year. So yeah, this year yes, is. Come uh, on. Yeah, so love don't, love, love don't Cost a Thing is 20 years this year. So maybe we, we do a remake or yeah, something like that. And, and Alec, <laughs> uh, Alvin and uh, Paris will, we'll <laughs> will have, have some babies. <laughs> Wait, you know, you might have to look into that. I think, I think the fans may want to see that. <laughs> Despite being one of the hardest working people in the entertainment industry and wearing several hats at all times, Nick Cannon has always made it clear that above all else, family is one of the most important things to him and now he's opening up about how his upbringing and being a father of 12 has shaped his outlook on the world um so was it weird for you to see like kim and mariah hang out at all? yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i mean north and monroe are dancing they you know they had no but idea. that's so that's so dope to me because they make it about the kids right they could have been half siblings and they have no idea <laughs> How you started stuff, <laughs> Tim. <just> <laughs> but, but nah, I think yeah. I thought it was dope, and like, and my daughter is, she is gifted. Like, she is such a, like, you could tell the entertainment bug is bitter, and she's just trying to figure it out. And she, she has such a gorgeous spirit. So to yeah. see her get to express and to see that connection with her mom is really dope for me. So I, I love it. It's all fun. Right now, you know, people talk about Nick Cannon and, you know, just having kids and stuff <laughs> like that. Obviously, I think what people disregard sometimes is it's a choice, especially like for the mothers, right? So yeah. what, but what is that 
process? Like, do you ask them? Do they ask you? Like, how do you determine who gets to carry on the canon legacy? Is, I wish it was that calculated <laughs> to where it's like, oh, there's a, there, there's a ceremony that we get to choose. <laughs> Right, and it goes back to what I okay. said earlier. It's like, I don't like to generalize. Every person that I have a child with, we've had a real connection in, from a, a solidarity space of years of understanding what this is going to be and knowing that this is, we don't take it lightly. It's not just about like having, like I be reading crazy stuff too. They said like, I'm having all of these kids for like stem cell research and I'm taking the org. <laughs> like, People be coming up with the wildest yeah. Illuminati crazy stuff, but it's like, it's just like any other family or any other scenario. How do holidays work? Like, I, I mean, they work how they work. I'll be busy as hell. Yeah. So <laughs> like, as like, like maybe as the kids get older, are you gonna like have it all at your house like Thanksgiving, or are you gonna move? I around? do that now. It's okay. just and it all depends. Like it's one of those things where whoever wants to. Can you they know, all be in the same state? Same I, house? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I think, but that's the thing where. It's just, there, it's individual relationships. And I think, you know, mine might be, you know, a little bit more abundant than the, the average person. Uh, but it's still like, we all grew up in blended families. We all grew up in ideas where you go to, you go over to your mom house for the weekend yeah. or your stepbrother, or your half sister, you know? So I don't think it's anything that we, you know, I, I respect the traditional and the nuclear right. family, but to me, the operation, I'm just being the best father that I can possibly be. And the mothers are, they the ones in control, not yeah. me. Like, and, you, I, and I just saluted and, and attempt to, you know, uh, whatever, whatever narrative they wish to share. And, but even in the reality of like, however they choose to live their life, all I can be is supportive. How are you gonna decide like how to split your assets? Like who gets the keys, <laughs> who gets the keys to run the business, you know? And, you know they gotta that. show and prove, yeah. you okay. know what I mean? Like hope, and that's the thing like, to me the dope thing about my kids, you gotta think about it like this. There's nothing in this world that they can't do or have access to because I can make it happen, right. you know what I mean? And that's not, you know, no bragging stuff, right, but like right, right. if my son wants to be a superstar athlete in this sport, I can go afford right, and right, make right. the connection to whoever trained the best baseball player, whoever, or if I, my, my daughter wants a, a record deal, I have record labels. If, yeah. if, you know, one of my sons wants to be an actor, one of my sons wants to be a nuclear chemist I got wow. <laughs> I got <laughs> connections at right. Ivy League high, uh, Ivy League schools right. to figure that out like so I'm I have a tribe of young impressionable brilliant minds mm -hmm. that I can help cultivate to be whatever they want to be yeah. so to me alone that's the that's my duty that's the blessing I've been given so I'm just trying to I just want to feed into them hopefully what I could feed into them, they make way more money than I could yeah. ever have made because now that's that's generational wealth. I got the water to to give to the seeds so they can root up and become the trees they need to become. And their names are all so unique. <laughs> <laughs> can you name all of them? Like from yeah. Well, I mean, I think from, like, <laughs> I just course. wonder, like, because you know we have to use like a, a family tree. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> to make it make sense sometimes. Nah, it really yeah. it it, ma it makes. Uh, I feel like. You know, Moroccan and Monroe <clears throat> was real cool because that's what Mariah and I came up with. And, you know, we, we had, you know, the, the Moorish Moroccan vibe was always something we talked about. And then, you know, Monroe for Mariah loves Marilyn Monroe. And then we yeah. call him rock and roll. Sounds like rock and roll. So that was always cool. And then there was Golden, who really is like the golden yeah. child. Like, kid is a genius. And then uh, his, his uh, sister is powerful, powerful queen. So their names kind of go together as well as the youngest of uh, me and Brittany's children is Rise. So it's like all of those names kind of go together. And then, you know, in the same sense with Abby, because her name starts with an A, she wanted to have children with Z names. So it was like Zion and Zillion. And then yeah. we were gonna go Zeppelin for our daughter because it was gonna be all three. But I was like, yo, she's so beautiful. That's right. her name. It's like beautiful Zeppelin. We call it Busy. So, <laughs> so there we go there. And then of of course then. Uh, breathe the way we are we kind of on the same page and like yo what we doing is legendary we got legendary love and like yo we call him ll uh and then lanisha who you know is a 
strong, just black woman and loves her chocolateness and all that. Yeah. So we, she, she had the name Onyx before. I, that was she did that. And I was like, I'm with it. Let's right. get it. And then I, I threw on the ice cold because her <laughs> name is cold, but it was like Onyx ice cold. Yeah. So, so that was dope. And then, obviously, the the scenario with uh, with Zen, which is still, you know, even touches my heart even when we speak about it because his name was so meaningful yeah. and then the fact that he's no longer physically with us and then the fact that we get to have a rainbow baby after that that we got a chance to name Halo yeah. so it all comes together Listen, I just want everyone sense. to know I, I had it written down you got that all in I order in daddy. This is what I, I see them and talk to them every day as a writer, musician, producer, comedian, and much more, it seems that there isn't much Nick Cannon can't do. And one can never expect what talents he may surprise us with next. But one thing's for sure, Nick Cannon has much more to give and he has no plans of taking his foot off the gas anytime soon. And I know we gotta wrap up, so I just wanna know for you, um, because there was a time when you would hear Nick Cannon and the first thing that would come to people's minds is, Bus busiest man in showbiz gets to the bag, da, 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 and that's still true. <laughs> I was about to say, that's busy still and true. <laughs> but now, sometimes when people hear Nick Cannon, the first thing they think about is Nick Cannon and the kids. So, what are you gonna do to make sure your legacy that you have created and that you have built doesn't get like lost or overshadowed yeah. by your other legacy? I think this is what it is. You know what I mean? Like answering every question, never hiding, never being ashamed never allowing someone else to control your narrative. You know what I mean? Like, and to your point, you, what you said is first, like people going to say what they say. And like when we first sat down, I said the, this exact same thing. You know, if you live for the praise, you got to die by the criticism. Yeah. And as much, and I don't want to say this in an egotistical way uh, at all, but I really don't care what other people think of me. Like yeah. other people's opinions is none of my business because I know where my heart is and I know that you know what he's saying you can't you can't let uh the haters get in the way of your assignment mm -hmm. when God is giving you an assignment you just got to follow suit and whatever the noise and the low frequency is yeah. saying that's supposed to happen they supposed to feel that way because they don't understand it there's a different there's a reason why they say I'm not normal there's a reason like <laughs> there's a reason like you could be ordinary or you could be extraordinary and you know I've just lived in that space for so long so I'm gonna keep doing me and they're gonna keep talking yeah and let everyone know what's one thing you want them to know about Nick Cannon the future superstars <laughs> that's what we do uh I, again I think you know we know each other in, in a real way but uh, really, I'm, I'm here to, to be compassionate and do yeah. for others. Okay. That's well, it. Thank you so much, no Nick. This Good was amazing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for stepping into the shade room. Can you do, uh, can you like, yeah. do a little freestyle? What? To, a what? little freestyle jingle to You trying to get me to rap, Timmy? <laughs> you are, you, I thought we was friends. Yeah, no, just, you know, just a little shade room we, No, Timmy, I'm not rapping. <laughs> it's a shade room outro. I'm, it's a jingle. Yeah, I, I'll do it if you, if you do it. I'll do it. All right, I'll beatbox. You start it off. Ooh. Okay. Can be. Shade uh. room. <laughs> okay, Let's okay. get it. Uh, uh, uh. Go. Go. What's up, roommates? It's your girl, Tembi. I'm up in here with Nick Cannon. He, I don't know what the E came from, but, but we, we gonna take it And we lit. And, you know, we rocking this ish. So Ooh. it's future superstars. And we pushing cars. Timmy beatboxing. And we going far. Yo, we going hard. Yo, I'm doing this is edible, redible. And, you know, it's, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> you, you better than Drake and uh, Andre 3000. <laughs> Nah, that was fun. Thank That's you. what's up. Hey, roommates. If you want to see more celebs stepping into the shade room, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here.